just read the tabloids. You know, it doesn't free you. It doesn't give you... But is that you what could you, be a billionaire and not have any peace. It's not what you felt, Dion, because, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, you know, you were a huge star going across the United States. You had the wealth, you had the power, you had the honor, you had it all. You'd screaming fans everywhere that, you went. That's what happens. You have it all, and then when you're alone, you're, you're thinking, but I got nothing. What, what's, what's missing? What is missing? I know. I need more wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. First of all, how are you today? I'm good. <laughs> You're doing good? Yeah. I saw once in an interview, since we started with a blessing, you saying that you get up every morning, you say in Our Father, <laughs> and it's all in the guy upstairs, his hands. Yeah, I do. Uh, Put on the helmet of, uh, you know, salvation, what? The breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, fit my uh, feet with the gospel of peace, shield of faith, the word of God, and I'm off. And you're off for the day. Yeah, why not? The other night I went out to Jersey, uh, was sitting next to you for the play, uh, for the musical, wonderful, and thank you so much. It was great to be there. And I was looking at you and your wife, Susan, you were staring up at the screen, uh, up on the stage. What is it like for you sitting there watching your life and your career unfold in front of you on a stage in a musical? Oof, it's, uh, it's crazy, it's surreal. It's, I get a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, you know, for the, the one big thing is sometimes I look at it and I say, man, no wonder why people bought our records. This is good. It's good music. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is like rocking. You know, this is working. And, uh, you know, it evokes a lot of feelings, especially, you know, the scene with me first meeting my wife, you know, when Mike Wartella and Christy Altamar uh, put that scene together. It, uh, it evokes because I've been married 59 years. 59 years, and, congratulations. And I know my, my wife about 66 years, so it's, it evokes those feelings I first had when I was 16 years old. I don't think a lot of people get to experience anything like that. It's crazy. And the, the other thing is uh, Christy Altamar, who uh, sings an a cappella version of teenager in love in the second act when she sings it when she first sang it and I heard it I thought to myself I've been singing this song for 60 years I never knew what it was about now I know it, and I finally know what it's about don't ask me why uh, this happens it's amazing it took you hearing it in that way yes to understand it in a different way yeah. Let's go back in time to the Bronx. Growing up in the Bronx here in New York City, from watching the play and your life, early life, I get the impression it wasn't always easy. I mean, a rough, tough life there in the Bronx growing up. Yeah, it was a rough neighborhood, you know. I, I think uh, a lot of my music uh, comes from that roughness, that, that strength, that... Uh, that strong, it's like a black music filtered through an Italian neighborhood, it comes out with an attitude, it's like, yo. But you know, like back in the 50s, uh, you know, the doo-wop groups were singing love songs and Chuck Berry was singing about schools and cars and I was like, I was like into this kind of a rough, tough, tough strong, th like everything was on the beat, like, yeah. I'm the type of guy that, it was all very uh, sharp. Ha had an attitude, yeah, you know? sharper. Because you literally, the music literally came from the streets. You were sitting, yeah, like, you were on the side streets with a bunch of guys, and that's where it started. You know, just uh, that's where we learned everything on the streets. You know, it, a lot of it wasn't good. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, for instance, there was this guy. His name was Harry Box. He spent most of his life in prison. He used to say. The Bible is full of contradictions. Okay. And I believed him. Mm. He probably never read it. <laughs> but, but you know, you'd hear things. Yeah. He was your biblical and, scholar. And, <laughs> and you'd think they're true, but you know, you, you grow up, you, you read it for yourself, and you go, no, I don't think Harry was right, you know. <laughs> and Dean, I was surprised watching the, the musical, knowing a bit about your life already, 
But seeing the home situation, I mean, it seemed that your parents didn't have the easiest of marriages and the relationship with your father, I mean, he wanted the best for you, didn't he? But the friction between the two of you. <laughs> well, you know, I think a lot of people grow old, but they don't grow up. They, uh, they remain like emotional 13 year olds, you know, they don't grow up emotionally. Mm. And uh, that's a problem. You, you, get, you get these guys, uh, you're looking at a grown up, they look like a grown up, but emotionally they, they're like 13 years old. You buy them an ice cream and they're fine, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think my, my father and mother were like teenagers. You know, that's, that's as far as they got emotionally. When you started singing and discovered your talent and, as you put it, your God-given gift for music, was it a release for you? Was it something you were instantly passionate about? I mean, how did it make you feel, Dion, when you were there singing on the streets? Well, the music was like a, was like a handle to salvation for me. It, it lifted me out of the, uh, the, the arguments. And, you know, the more my, my father and mother argued, <laughs> I'd, I'd go well, in the corner sing. of the house, get out, <laughs> take the guitar out, and I became a better guitar player, and I started writing songs. So it was like a, it was like a ticket out, you know. Uh, it, 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 instead of just winding in and, you know, just exploding, it just got me out of myself. So it was a blessing. It, it was, uh, man, it's just, uh, I always say the blues is... Uh, the naked cry of the human heart longing to be in union with God. It's almost, it's almost like if you take the Psalms, the Psalms are songs. David wrote a lot of the Psalms and they're songs. And if you retitle them, you could call them the blues because it was people always crying out, longing to be in union with God. They were, they were, you know, they felt distant. They felt lonely. They felt broken. They felt lost. You know, it's, yeah. So the music wasn't far from, uh, we, we were writing our own songs in a way. It was your release song. Yeah. It's, it's incredible the deep faith that you have today, Dion. But at the beginning, going back growing up, I know you came from a Catholic family, but was it just something that was cultural, your faith, or was it something you really believed in even at a young age, or how did that develop? No. No, I didn't have I didn't have the clue. <laughs> no, I wouldn't know God from a hole in a wall. No, <laughs> it 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 was uh, it was nice. Yeah. All my aunts and uncles, you know, Christmas, pile into the church and all the candles are lit and the choirs are singing and it's snowing outside and it's harmony. Mm. You know, that's one thing you feel in church, like I didn't feel in my house. There was, it was always conflict yeah. and never resolved. Everybody was always at each other. Then you could walk in, you walk into the church and they're, they're singing the same song and they're praying the same prayer and everybody's praying a Hail Mary or a, an Our Father or, you know, praying the Mass and it's, it's just a beautiful feeling, you know. A comforting harmony. Absolutely. A beautiful harmony. So then as you grew up, uh, because during the play, I know the, the, um, the musical shows the very best of your life, the brightest parts of your career, but then also the darker parts, and we could say the worst parts with addiction. Um, do you remember the first time realizing that you had a problem with alcohol, with drugs? <sighs> it was never a problem. I, I saw it as like... A like the most comforting thing, you know, it was like heaven. You know, I thought I found heaven and I found hell, but I think the day you realize that you got a problem is when you try to quit and you're saying, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll quit. And then you don't, and then you try it again. And then you find, then you start thinking, I can't live with it and I can't live without it. Wow and you find yourself really in like a bondage. You realize it has a grip on you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. One day, unfortunately, I, I tried it and you know, then you, you, you feel so good. You, you walk into the candy store, you walk to, up to a girl that you, you wanna talk to and you, you feel like you could say anything. You can't say anything wrong. You don't even have to second guess your feelings. You're like, yo, 
the kid is here. What do you want to know? It's like you think you know everything. And then the next day you're thinking, where's that stuff that I took? I want to feel like yeah. that again. Yeah. And then it gets a grip on you, it gets in your head, and man, it's just, uh, yeah, and that's what the, the play kind of focuses in on that. You know, there's a song in the play called You Belong to Me. Mm. And uh, it's almost like heroin singing to a person saying, you know, I got you. I only figured that halfway through that your manager in the play is actually the addiction. Yeah. Who, and even at the end, he says to you, I'm still going to be here in the background. I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Is that true? Does it, I know you've been uh, sober now for many, many years, but do you often find sometimes it's still there in the background? Uh, no, not with that. I, I, thank God it just was lifted. You know, the, the obsession you know, a guy grabbed me back in 1968 and uh, he took me to a 12-step spiritually based program. And uh, they told me, uh, I was sitting next to a guy and he said, how'd you get here? I said, uh, so-and-so brought me. He said, somebody must have been praying for you. And I thought, I never heard that before. Mm. <laughs> and he said, you know, when you go home tonight, say a prayer. And I left that meeting, that was like April 1st, 1968. And I found myself on my knees before going to bed and I said, God, I said, it would be nice to be closer to you. My whole world changed. That was the turning point. I, I, I got up off my knees. I haven't had a drug or a drink since. No. You know? that, from that point, it was down on your knees? Well, it, it started. I yeah. became aware of God's power before I became aware of his reality. You know, he, he touched me, and I haven't had a drug or a drink in 54 years. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it's, it's miraculous. I mean, it's, um, you know, a broken mind. A sick mind can't cure a sick mind. That's why they tell you in the program, you need a power greater than yourself, a power greater than your parents, a power greater than your employee. You need a power to get you well, you know? So you better reach out and no matter how much faith you have or you don't have, just, just try it, you know? And that's what happened. Another great scene in the musical that I loved, when you had, hit rock bottom you went into the church in the Bronx and you were talking to the priest and you were down in your knees and you said to him father I'm afraid I'm, I have fear and he said you don't need fear you need faith and to surrender my neighborhood was rough man you couldn't show any weakness mm. so surrender was a dirty word you you know you surrender you didn't I don't care if somebody's banging your head on the concrete okay. <laughs> you don't you don't surrender you don't show your weakness you know but i got a friend uh, in recovery who started telling me he said you know it, it's not running away from anything it's running to someone it's running to your creator the most the most courageous thing a man can do is open his heart to his creator so run to him. He loves you. He created you. Uh, he can fix you, you know. So I tried it. I just gave up, you know, and I found myself lying back in, a, in the, the power of, of God who created the, the universe, you know. You mentioned your wife, Susan, at the beginning, who I had the pleasure of meeting the other night as well, a wonderful woman. And you were 16, she was 14 when you met in yeah. the Bronx and uh, childhood sweethearts and it went on and 59 years coming up to six decades married. She stood by you through thick and thin. Yeah, she's, uh, she's steady, she's grounded. She's like, a, I don't know what it is. She's a natural, you know. When you look back at your incredible career spanning 60 years in music, Dion, is there something you're most proud of? Whew, I, you know, I, I, I got to say right now, I'm, uh, as far as the career is concerned, I'm really proud of the play. 
you know, to, you know, all my life, uh, I always say I'm pretty easy to figure out, maybe not so, but in my mind I am. I feel like when I was a kid, I heard Hank Williams, I heard Jimmy Reed, and it brought me into a place of enchantment, of a place of pleasure, delight, wonder, awe, beauty. It just took me away. And all my life I've been uh, searching for that thing in myself to create that sound where I could transmit it to, to you or to other people to experience that thing I, I experienced when I was 11. You know, so the play when I talk to the cast, there's, there's like 90 people in this thing, you know. I, I told them the story. I said, uh, you know, in all my life I've been looking to take people on a trip, looking to transmit this enchantment. I said, I think this play embodies that. The only difference is it's two and a half hours long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, uh, it takes you through a range of emotions, but ultimately, uh, to a place of enchantment, you know. When you look back, apart from the obvious we spoke about and so on, any regrets you think about? Yeah, I don't know if I should talk about them. Uh, if I had a, you know, I would, I would do some things differently. When I was a kid, I didn't know better, you know. Hurt people, mm. you know, I, I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, made amends the best I could, you know. Like my friend said to me, amends are restoring relationships to God's original intention. So I tried to do that to, to the best of my ability, but uh, yeah, I do, I do. But I'm sure your faith helps you with that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, it's an amazing thing that, uh, you know, before you know Christ, before you, uh, you know, like St. Augustine said, my heart is restless until I come to rest in God alone, you know. And uh, that's where I was at because when you don't know God and you don't have that relationship, it's like, it's like you're not plugged in. So you have to fill your life with something. And it's, you know, like, St. Thomas Aquinas said it's the, the four great addictions or the, the principal, you know, uh, temptations, wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. And, you know, you think that if you get enough wealth, enough pleasure, some kind of power and control over your life and honor, what a wonderful thing. People look, you know, you're wonderful, you know, all this kind of stuff. You'd be fine, but that's not the way it works. Just read the tabloids, yeah. you know, it doesn't free you. It doesn't give you, but is that you could you, be a billionaire and not have any peace. It's not what you felt, Dion, because, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, you know, you were a huge star going across the United States. You had the wealth, you had the power, you had the honor, you had it all. You'd screaming fans everywhere that, you went. That's what happens, you have it all, and then when you're alone, you're, you're thinking, but I got nothing, what, what, so what's missing? What is missing? I know, I need more wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. That's what I need, and you start, you're going off again, and it, it kills you, people jump off bridges, you know. But, uh, you know, thanks be to God, uh, you know, I had a, a wife that kind of, uh, you know, just was a, a real witness to me, you know, she, she knew the deal, you know, she knew what gives you a freedom of excellence, you know, that, it, that it's all in God. You, you have to be connected. If you're not, if you don't find that center, if you don't find him and have that relationship, yeah, uh, it's, it's a hard road because without that, all the pressure is on you to figure this whole thing out. It's all on you. It's like you're on manual. And I don't have to think like that anymore. I, I, I know God has a plan for my life. Look, all this stuff that's happening to me, this play, this, 
It's in God's hands. I couldn't plan it if I tried. I mean, I'm working. I'm working hard. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I show up for rehearsals. Yeah. As they say, you know, God says, I'll move mountains, but bring the shovel. Yes. You know? <laughs> I, I got the shovel. You know, I'm doing the best I could, but I couldn't plan it. I couldn't yeah. plan this outcome. Life is good, eh? Yeah. I hope you don't mind me asking, because you look great. You sound great. What age are you today, Dion? I'm going to be, uh, what, 83 in July. 83. So, uh, How are you feeling? Uh, better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you listen to music today, by the way? Do you listen to yeah, rock and roll? Yeah, sure. To? I mean, uh, listen. My wife, she has 10 Van Morrison CDs yeah. in the car. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> she, you I hope you like Van Morrison. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm with her, you know. Uh, but sure. Uh, but you listen to new stuff coming out well, today? Well, you know, or? I used to stay up with everything. Mm -hmm. And then some years ago, I just stopped. And I, I started going back. And I started going back to the 30s and the 40s and started listening to my roots, mm -hmm. you know. The Robert Johnson and uh, Howlin' Wolf and Lightning Hopkins and, you know, and moving through the years, you know. Finally, Father, Father John would know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, he would. Father John is off camera there. <laughs> He's making sure this is all in check and theologically yeah. sound. We doing okay yeah. so far? Yeah, We're doing a, good. It's the theology of the blues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking to the future. Whatever it holds, as you've said so many times, you see it, that it's all in God's hands. But you've done so much. It seems like you've done it all, Dion. But do you have any dreams or hopes for the yeah. future? One, I want to play shortstop for the Yankees. <laughs> that's about it. That's it? That's it. Well, you know what? If that's the only thing left to do, I think you've conquered it all. And... Dion, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. That was a good rehearsal, Dion. We'll tape yeah. that now. <laughs> roll on the next yeah, you want to roll now, guys, and we'll do that? <laughs>